I'm going to um, tell you two true stories that happened to me. So, um, in my, my previous job, I worked at Reed College in, in Southeast, and I was launching a brand new digital asset management bookmarking app. So we had this, this and, and think of that acronym, DAM, Digital Asset Management. We had this damn system that was really terrible. And it didn't let users say, oh, I like this image and that image. And so our history professors couldn't put together a class and say, these 50 um, paintings that things we're going to look at today, and here's a gallery of stuff that I want to share with you, my students. Like, they couldn't do that. So I built an app to do that. And uh, we had this prior system that was really lame. It was even worse. And on launch day, I had to import all that data in. So I import all that data. Into, into the production system. And we're off to the races, and it's great. And then I like open up my terminal, and I'm like, OK, great. Well, now I have all the stuff I have to do. So I, I need to start by emptying out my staging database, because it's full of all this junk data. And so I'm like in my console, like drop all the things. Why is this taking more than a quarter of a second? Oh, this is production. And so I drop the production database. Um, Never drop the production database. <laughs> uh, well, it turns out because that app had been live for a grand total of about 20 minutes, and the import process took about seven minutes. I just re-imported stuff and walked away and pretended like it never happened. Um, and I learned a valuable lesson from this, which is your console, your Rails console, doesn't tell you what you need to know. Because a common part of our workflow is that we work in multiple environments at once. It'll be in your dev box, I've got a staging console, I might have a production console open, and I had that. All through my console windows, and they all looked exactly the same. And so I realized, wait a minute. I, when you open an IRB prompt, it says IRB at the prompt. And when you open a Rails console, it doesn't. So I can probably configure that thing. So I configured that thing. And now, in fact, when I arrived at New Relic, all the prompts look the same in all the environments, and I put in a piece of code so that it tells you the uh, at least the first two letters of the environment that you're in. So if you're in dev, it says dev. If you're in a production console, it says pro. So you know every line in your console tells you what you're doing. So that's my first fail story. Um, the second epic fail story uh, is way more epic um, because of who was on the receiving end and what they did with it. So um, fast forward a few years, I'm a much better Rails developer. I'm working here at Relic. And, um, uh, I was launching some new feature, and uh, I had to query a part of our database that was really awful, like really awful. For those of you who are local to track page requests, you know what this means. This was a table where we had a row for every hit we had gotten from every user ever. So at the time, we were handling, I don't know, maybe 3,000 requests a minute. So this table was writing 3,000 rows a minute, and we had six years of this data. And it was badly indexed. And so I was launching my feature. I need to query this table to see what people were looking at. And so the feature goes live, and what had worked just fine in staging, where we didn't have 3,000 requests a minute, all of a sudden when it hit production and hit this database table, it just exploded, right? So the queries aren't taking you know, 10 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds. They're taking 30 seconds. And so we saturated the unicorns, and the site went into the death spiral and just collapsed. Coincidentally, at this exact moment in time, our CEO, Lou, was talking with O'Reilly Media, not Bill O'Reilly from Fox News, but like the guys who published the books that we like, um, and he was getting interviewed. And he, so I push, so we, we push deploy, and then like a minute and a half later, Lou goes to demo our product on camera live. So what does he do? He, he pulls up the site, it's rpm.relic.com, and it's not loading. And he's looking at it, he's like, oh, it's not loading. Well, there must be something going on with the site. And he's doing this, he's speaking on the interview. There must be something going on with the site. So let me pull up our staging environment, which we use to monitor our production environment. So he goes to our staging environment, which is not blowing up, because the table isn't that big in staging, it doesn't have that much traffic in it. And within 30 seconds, he's drilled down to the exact line of code and says, it's that query that's killing the site. <laughs> right? And, and he, <laughs> thankfully, it was a performance management company when this kind of stuff could happen, right? And, and so um, 
uh, Luz does this on film, and we would watch the video afterwards. Like, he's doing this on film, and you can see the interviewer, his jaw is just on the floor. He cannot believe what he just witnessed. A live debug of a production failure during his canned interview. Like, this is an unbelievable thing, right? So, um, anyway, so, uh, when this all, when the dust settled, and when we cleaned up the site, Later we realized, oh, the interview had been going on, and then we saw the video, and we, we laughed about it. And I, I went and apologized profusely to Lou, our CEO, because you know I didn't want to tank his interview. He actually thanked me for it. He said, well, thanks, because you gave me a great opportunity to demo our stuff in, in a true way. Like, you gave me a real problem to diagnose. So thanks for that. I said, you're welcome, anytime. <laughs> and, uh, and again, you know, there's a big lesson here that I learned. And, and the lesson here is that scale is really important, right? So um, the thing that worked just great on my dev box was slightly slow staging and production just tanked. And we learned a bunch of lessons from this, and since then we've put in a bunch of controls around how we ship code. So when we're deploying a new feature, we wrap it up in these feature blocks. So at the flip of a switch, I can turn that code path on or off in production. So if I were shipping that thing today, I would have shipped it, watched the unicorn start to dev file, and just turn it off, and it would have recovered and it would have been just fine. Um, and it would have deprived Lou of his great opportunity to have the fantastic interview. So, use feature blocks. They will save your bacon. Um, because you can turn them on and off at the drop of a hat. A normal code deploy takes at least a couple of minutes. So, this is a way better solution than that. And the other thing that I learned is, um, if you work for a performance management company, make sure that you've got something interesting to demo when you're demoing your performance management software. <coughs> if you're demoing performance management software, that's recording data from software that is very performant, it's very, very boring. So make your data interesting. That's the other thing that I learned. So that's it for me. So thank you.